Today's video will review 10 questions you may see on the private pilot written exam or check ride regarding flight instruments, V speeds, and how temperature and pressure settings can affect altimeter readings. Question 1. If a flight is made from an area of low pressure into an area of high pressure without the altimeter setting being adjusted, the altimeter will indicate. To illustrate, elevation at Denver, Colorado is one mile high and Seattle, Washington is at sea level. The air pressure is lower in Denver than it is in Seattle because Denver is at a higher elevation. The average air pressure in Denver is roughly 12 pounds per square inch versus at sea level where the air pressure is usually about 14.7 pounds per square inch. One way to remember how air pressure affects altimeters is high to low, look out below, meaning that if you fly from an area of high pressure to low pressure without adjusting the altimeter setting then your aircraft would be at a lower altitude than the altimeter is reading, and thus the aircraft's altimeter would indicate an altitude higher than the actual altitude above sea level. Conversely, if you fly from an area of low pressure to an area of high pressure without adjusting the altimeter setting then your aircraft would be at a higher altitude than the altimeter is reading and thus the aircraft's altimeter would indicate an altitude lower than the actual altitude above sea level. The correct answer is A. Question 2. What is the maximum flaps extended speed? The white arc on the airspeed indicator is the allowable airspeed range with flaps extended. As you can see, the max airspeed with flaps extended is 100 knots. The correct answer is A. Question 3. What altitude is altimeter 3 indicating? The short, skinny hand, represented by the blue arrow, represents tens of thousands of feet, the short, wider hand, shown by the yellow arrow, represents thousands of feet, and the longest hand, see the green arrow, represents hundreds of feet. Since the medium arrow is just past the 9 and the long hand is pointing to the 5, this altimeter indicates that the aircraft is at 9,500 feet. Altimeter 1 is reading 10,500 feet and altimeter 2 is showing 14,500 feet. The correct answer is A. Question 4. If a pilot changes the altimeter setting from 30.11 to 29.96, what is the approximate change in indication? The standard lapse rate is 1 inch of mercury per 1,000 feet of altitude. To solve this problem, subtract 29.96 from 30.11 to get 0 0.15. Then multiply 1,000 by 0.15 to get 150 feet. Since the altimeter is being adjusted from a higher to lower pressure setting, the altimeter will indicate 150 feet lower. Another way to look at this is if the altimeter was not adjusted and our airplane was flown from the higher to lower pressure, then the aircraft would be 150 feet lower than the altimeter was indicating. The correct answer is A. Question 5. What is the caution range of the airplane? The yellow arc on the airspeed indicator represents the caution range for the airplane, which is 165 to 208 knots. As the name implies, a pilot must exercise extreme caution when flying at speeds in this range. The correct answer is C. Question 6. What flight instruments are driven by the pitot-static system? As you can see from the image on the right, the pitot-static system drives the airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and the altimeter. There can be errors in the readings of these flight instruments if the pitot tube and or static port become blocked. That is why it is important for pilots to check the pitot-static system during their pre-flight checks to ensure both the pitot tube and static ports are cleared of any debris or obstructions before beginning flight. The correct answer is C. Question 7. The maximum speed at which the airplane can be operated in smooth air is. See our previous video, V-Speed Review for Student Pilots and Flight Training, to learn more about V-Speeds or read FAR Part 1. The v &E speed indicates the never exceed speed and is indicated by the red line on the airspeed indicator. 
Since the line is just below the 210 knot airspeed indicator, the best answer is 208 knots. The correct answer is B. Question 8. What is the action of the airplane if the ball of the inclinometer moves to the left of center during a left turn? As you can see from the image on the right, which can be found in Chapter 8 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, if the ball of the inclinometer is moving in the same direction as the bank of the aircraft, then the aircraft is in a slipping turn. Conversely, if the ball of the inclinometer is moving in the opposite direction of the bank of the airplane, then the aircraft is in a skidding turn. The goal is to center the ball of the inclinometer when turning the aircraft to get a coordinated turn. If the aircraft is slipping, then more rudder needs to be applied in the direction of the turn. If the aircraft is skidding, then more rudder is needed on the opposite side of the turn. One way to remember how to execute a coordinated turn is to step on the ball, which means to apply more rudder in the direction that the ball of the inclinometer is deflected. The correct answer is A. The ball of the inclinometer is moving to the left during a left turn, which indicates a slip. Question 9. What is an important airspeed limitation that is not color-coded on airspeed indicators? Maneuvering speed is the maximum speed for abrupt maneuvers and is sometimes called the rough airspeed. Maneuvering speed is not color-coded on an airspeed indicator. The correct answer is A. Question 10. How do variations in temperature affect the altimeter? As you can see from the figure on the bottom right, since hot air is not as dense as cold air, pressure levels are raised on warm days and the indicated altitude will be lower than the actual altitude. Conversely, since cold air is denser than hot air, pressure levels are lower and an aircraft's indicated altitude will be higher than the true altitude on colder days. The correct answer is B. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.